as with most things in life, there are trade-offs. Cab, open station. There's a lot of positives and negatives with either one, so we'll go ahead and give you the good and the bad about both cabs and open stations. Now both of these tractors that you see here are going to be part of the 3R family of tractors offered by John Deere. This doesn't necessarily just have to apply to this series or even just to John Deere. It could be just to cabs in general. But keep in mind that we are talking about factory cabs. And when I say factory, I mean they are integrated with the tractor, built, designed that way at the factory, and they also include air conditioning. So if the thought of just figuring out the right tractor for you isn't hard enough, figuring out if you want an open station or a cab can be just as daunting of a task. Let's go ahead and give you a couple of price points here, that way you can compare a apples to apples versus an open station and a cab. So if you take a 3046R, like this one right here in an open station, versus a 3046R in a cab version, you're gonna pay about 8,000, maybe $8,500 difference right in that ballpark there, just to simply have that factory cab on there. That doesn't include the upgrades, the options like rear wiper, rear work lights, all the other kind of stuff that can come along with it. That's just simply to put that cab on the machine. And now if you step up to a 4R series, like a 4066R or anything in that family of tractors there, you're gonna see more like a 9,000, maybe even a $10,000 price change from the open station to the cab. Something else to consider is simply getting on and off of your machine. And so if you get on and off a lot, sometimes a cab gets in the way. You know, you can easily and quickly get on and off of an open station tractor like this. Very easy to do. Obviously, there's no door, there's no overhead, there's no constriction in any different area that you have. You just simply climb up the step and sit down and you hop off just as easy. I almost tripped there. So with a cab tractor, of course, you've got the door here. You're going to be going in and out. If you're taller like I am, about 6'3", maybe I'm rounding up, maybe not. That doesn't really matter. You know, you have a little bit of an overhead restriction here to consider as well and then also when you open it up you know you just feel like you kind of have this this hard stop right here so you a little bit have to squeeze more in just to get into the tractor or out of the tractor right here but once you're in there it's not a big deal so again got to be careful of this area up here you do have some constriction right here on access getting in and out and then of course you close it which means if you want to get out you got to open it back up not the end of the world, and believe me, you get used to it. Make sure you stick around till later in the video as well, because I'll tell you which I would prefer. You know, I used to think one thing, and now I think the other. I've kind of flip-flopped over the years, and I think a lot of folks might tend to do that. Hey, if you like tractors, if you like trucks, and if you like trailers, then hit that subscribe button below. I have a lot of great videos on this channel. Make sure you read through the comments as well. Leave a comment of your own, a really good community here. Okay, so I'm just standing up on the drawbar in the back of the tractor here, as you can see. And so essentially I'm putting this camera right where your head would be, you know, roughly, give or take a little bit. So you can see the visibility there. And again, I've talked about this before on the 4R series and the 3R series is about the same. If you have a loader on there, it can be challenging to um, see the bucket or the forks or that kind of thing. But um, the same can be said on the 3R2, it just kind of is what it is. But you do have really good visibility um, there would be loader masks that are going to stick up somewhere in here, you know, and right over here. The loader for it, for this guy, is uh, I'm sitting right over there. So that's where it would go. But you can see overall good visibility. Now let's take a look at the cab. So I'm leaning back all the way here. That way you can kind of have a, a visual of where the uh, operator's head would be, their eyeballs, and looking around. And so you lean to this side, and you can still see down there. Uh, you lean over to this side, you have the same uh, general visibility. There's sight glass, there's windows all the way down there. Uh, right to the base of the floorboard, just like you would have on the open station, okay? And again, all the way around, give you a little look back there, right back down there, try to swing around and uh, look at the other side too, if you're just leaning over and looking out. Really good visibility in, in this machine. So it's really not much of a visibility difference either way, unless of course you're talking about up, because of course there's no sunroof or anything else in here. Hey, really quick, I want you guys to check this out because I'm asked about it all the time. But here again are these mirrors here. They are totally rotatable, totally flexible, very easy to install on most of the John Deere loaders out there. Take a look over on this side right here. You can see this hole that I'm covering up here with my fingers. You can mount these mirrors right to that hole. You can get a whole set of them, so you get one for each side here. Again, they're going to swivel just like this. Make sure you read the links below in the description. That's where you can get them on Amazon. Okay, so put your eyeballs near the top of the cab and the top of the ROPS on this open station here. What are you going to see? You're going to see overall the fact that the cab is actually 
a little bit shorter than the ROPS even. So one of the big considerations that folks talk about are going to be if you're going through woods, if you're going through the forest, you know, where there's a big canopy all the time and you're just going to beat your cab up. Well, that can be true. It certainly can. You know, you can always put the ROPS down so you can get underneath uh, and get through tighter situations. However, you do want to have that ROPS up as much as you possibly can. It's for your safety and your protection. Make sure you reference your owner's manual. So if you look at it that way, you know, if you have an open station with the ROPS up versus a cab tractor, you're essentially going to be able to fit those through the same types of spaces overall. You know, the tractor width doesn't change, the tractor length doesn't change, the overall height is really within a few inches either way. Now if you do fold that ROPS down, of course you're going to get through tighter areas, that's just common sense. One of the other things to consider is going to be for storage space and what you can store it inside. With a cab station like this, you are going to have to have an 8-foot door. It is not going to fit through a 7-foot door, it will fit through an 8-foot door with ease. But with an open station, of course you can fold that ROPS down, you can fit it easily inside a 7-foot garage door, which is going to be a standard for a lot of homeowners out there. Make sure you check out the very end of the video when I'm putting these tractors away. I'll give you a little visual here on both the open station and the cab and how they fit underneath an 8-foot door. You know, so every once in a while I'll hear a comment about uh, being cramped, you know, being kind of crammed into a cab tractor. But the truth is, is that the open station and the cab really have the same layout. You know, I mean, it's the same size, same proportions. You know, it's just going to be a little bit of a different configuration on the fenders with controls here or there, that kind of thing. However, the overall footprint of it is going to be dimensionally the same. You know, so I can move the seat up all the way up like this. I can move it all the way back there to have some more room here, but you can see this is a comfortable operator station. And this unit and that unit both actually have an air ride seat. And so, you know, the way I'm sitting right now, I'm pretty pop propped up, um, but I can go ahead and pull this out and just deflate it and get all the way down here if I want to. If I turn the key part way on and push this little button in down here, it'll slowly start to fill it up and uh, eventually it'll fill up and then lift me right back up to where I was at. So as you can see, it takes a little bit of time to fill it on up, but you typically don't deflate it the whole way. So this is the open station, and you can go ahead and compare that against the cab station, you know, which is going to be essentially the same thing. You're going to notice, again, the different configuration. It's a cloth seat once you get into the cab version of it as well, but it's the same air ride seat. You're going to have the same system or a handle here somewhere. They move it over to this side, depending on the year that it is, and you can slide it all the way forward again. So this would, of course, be too crammed. Or you can slide it the whole way back and you can see my knees are just about in the same position as they were over there on the open station. So very similar, very um, pretty much identical, but you don't hear so much about the open station being cramped, you know, whether it's in the 3R or the 4R. You know, I've done some videos on the 4R series as well in my cab tractor. Great machine, similar um, concept with the open station versus the cab. You're going to have the same amount of room in there. Maybe not overhead. So if you're a giant, you know, they're just, they're just not designing tractors for, you know, way taller than average people. And so it's just going to be part of the reality of the situation. It's unfortunate, but it's true. So besides paying for the basic upgrade just to get a cab, you're going to have some additional options to consider to outfit that cab. You're going to have potentially some more maintenance down the road or even some unexpected repairs. Let's go through those. So the basic cab version is what I'm talking about upgrading to, and that is not going to come with every option that you see on a machine like this. And so a couple of those options are going to be back here on the back side of the cab, which are going to be rear work lights. Those are not going to be standard when you get one of these tractors. There's something that you can add on. Same thing with the rear wiper. Okay, The rear wiper blade there, there will be a provision for it up there, and you can add it on later. However, that is not going to always be included, so you'll have to pay extra for that. Another thing that you're going to have to consider is the fact that not every uh, cab option is going to have a, uh, a radio. There we go. So this is, again, going to be part of typically the uh, deluxe cab. There'll be a basic, there'll be a deluxe version of this. And so some of those costs are going to be accounted for in there. Oh, and while we're on that note, something like this right here, an air ride seat, whether it's an open station or a cab, that is always an upgrade. You'll get a regular basic suspension seat, which is still very good in my opinion, but, um, and I have kind of gone back and forth on what I think about the air ride seat, whether it's worth it or not. And, you know, after having it on my 3046, I didn't really think so, but after having it on my 4066, I kind of flip flop back again and thought it was a really nice upgrade. It is just a chunk of money, and I would, wouldn't say that it's life or death if you get it either way. So I talked about unscheduled maintenance, and so one of the things you need to consider with a cab is the fact that accidents could happen, and 
uh, as we all know who have owned homes or grew up in, in homes with a lot of windows, we definitely had a baseball fly through our front window and uh, I have heard horror stories about these calves with their doors flying open if they're not secured properly. And I've also had some folks uh, knock out this pane of glass right here on one side or the other when they are reattaching their front end loader. And I did have one of these tractors uh, come in a year ago or so maybe it was that had actual plexiglass uh, put right here just to kind of prevent uh, any further damage after that homeowner had already paid that price I guess a time or two. And so then of course you also have the maintenance part as well which is going to be dealing with the HVAC system primarily you know with your air conditioning with your heat maybe with electrical issues with the radio or with the lights or the wipers that are all on there too. So just something to keep in mind not to dissuade you or discourage you because a lot of us buy vehicles and homes and all sorts of things, boats, everything with all sorts of options on it. And so we kind of know it going into it, but it's just to kind of have you uh, get your brain churning and know what you're going to be getting into. Okay, so we did talk about the layout being a little bit different earlier, just the configuration. And what I mean by that are just going to be the location, you know, of certain things. And of course, the loader joystick is still going to be over here in this general area. You're still going to have a lot of controls up here as well. And uh, you're going to have some tool storage of some kind, or at least uh, storage cubbies over on this fender here. Same thing up here, you're going to have some different uh, uh, locations. So your four-wheel drive lever, for instance, is down here. Uh, right now, it's going to be located up here on the the cab tractor version and some other things. So just take a look at this layout here and then we'll go take a look at the the cab tractor version as well. So here's a little bit closer look at the cab tractor version. You're going to see again instead of having a flip lid here for storage you're going to have just some open uh, areas here for storage. And then if I climb up you can see over here you still kind of have all these controls. This, this is like load match, motion match, speed match cruise control, still have your PTO knob over here. You can see your loader joystick is right here. Three point hitch is gonna be over here as well. And then a lot of knockouts for other uh, controls. You have more knockouts here for more controls than you would on the open station. This is gonna be your, your uh, mid to rear uh, PTO select. So you have two PTOs on this one. Note that this is a field addable option. So that open station there, I don't believe it has the mid PTO, but that can be added. Uh, which is a, a rare thing with, with tractors. You typically can't add that on most of them. Uh, Four-wheel drive select right there if we didn't talk about it. But you'll see mostly everything else is the same here. Of course, you've got your radio up there. A lot of vents. Uh, dome light here as well. A little visor. You do have one mirror here. I did... Um, this one had external mirrors that were mounted on the outside right out here on both sides that were mounted right into... Uh, this, this little chunk right here, I robbed those and put them on my 4066R, and then you do have your HVAC controls right there as well. You know, so I feel like as I start to get older and older, I really appreciate more and more of the creature comforts. And while I used to totally lean towards an open station tractor for myself, I now heavily, heavily lean towards a cab tractor with heat and air conditioning. And I get it, that's not going to be for everybody's budget because not getting a cab tractor, just sticking with that open station can pay for a lot of attachments. But for me, I just really appreciate being in, in the heat and the warmth in the wintertime when I'm outside plowing or moving stuff around the lot here. And the same can be said in the summertime. It can be hot and sweltering, whether you're doing food plots or mowing, whatever the case might be, that AC sure is nice. So let me know what you think. Make sure you leave a comment below as well and read through all of them. If you haven't done so, hit that subscribe button. And don't forget to check out GoodWorksTractors.com. I can help you with a tractor, with an attachment, put together a whole package, help with delivery and financing too. Until next time, stay safe. We'll see you soon.